Uh, very good afternoon. Welcome to the session. Um, can you hear me okay? Okay, good. Uh, I'm Krishna Kumar. You can call me KK. I'm from uh, Cloud Enablers. Uh, the session today is going to be about uh, extending horizon for uh, managing multiple uh, multi-cloud environment. Um, a brief uh, profile about uh, myself. I'm from. Uh, cloud Enablers, uh, one of the co-founders and take care of operations uh, at uh, Cloud Enablers. Um, so at Cloud Enablers, we do um, uh, cloud product development, OpenStack services, and cloud migration. Uh, we also have a cloud lab where we uh, explore uh, OpenStack, the uh, latest versions that keep uh, coming in, and also the related products. And uh, this session is about one of the tools that we developed in our uh, cloud lab. We called it Hybrid Horizon, where uh, Horizon can be extended to use, uh, manage multiple uh, clouds. Um, this is going to be the agenda for the session. Uh, I'm sure all of you know uh, quite a bit about uh, Horizon. I'm just going to briefly touch about uh, what is Horizon, and uh, what do we call a multi-cloud environment? Uh, what are the typical uh, tenets of uh, a multi-cloud environment? And what tools are available? Uh, just a sample list of them. And uh, if these tools are available, why should we go for a customization of Horizon? And let's say we decide to go for it. What are the typical requirements or needs that you will have to go about it? And a brief demo of the tool that uh, we have uh, developed. And, uh, and an explanation of how exactly we went about doing it, and a uh, briefly list of uh, related OpenStack features that enable similar kind of um, an, uh, use case. And I'll definitely save some time for uh, question and answers. Um, and uh, a note here, I'll, I'm uh, open to share the uh, presentation, so if you can leave your uh, email ID or a card, I can send you the uh, deck. Uh, so that you can save some space in your uh, mobile phones or tabs. And uh, we are also open to share the uh, code if you are interested. After the session, you can reach out to me and I can do that. Okay. Uh, briefly about uh, Horizon, what it is. Um, it is the self-service portal for uh, OpenStack. It provides you uh, the management functions that you can do um, for all the OpenStack services. So uh, by default, you will uh, have uh, the management functions for compute, storage, network, um, glance, which is the images, and uh, identity. Um, the other services, as you add it to your OpenStack setup, you will also be able to enable it to be managed from uh, Horizon. Um, so it, Horizon provides you the summary of all the resources and the states, uh, and you will be able to perform a set of actions on these uh, resources. And in terms of technology, it's built on uh, Django Web Framework, Python, and uh, from the ISO's release, there has been a, uh, a lot of uh, movement towards uh, AngularJS as well. A typical multi-cloud environment, what does it uh, contain? On the top layer, you have the uh, users in the enterprise, uh, and you have a need to have entitlements for these different users where users might carry different roles, and based on the roles they have, they should have different kind of access into uh, these uh, infrastructure. And uh, as an indicative, uh, so you can have one or more public cloud accounts that you have as part of your uh, infrastructure. And you would have on-premise infrastructure where you have OpenStack or other platform private clouds in your environment. and. Uh, I've also shown an option of a cloud brokerage platform, which can enable you to have uh, access through a single API and have access to multiple other cloud service providers. Um, so that is uh, possible as well. And once you have all this infrastructure, you would want to perform a set of management functions and orchestration functions. Let's say you want to provision your infrastructure, manage the life cycle of them, take backups, uh, um, and you will want to uh, set up your scaling rules and uh, do your scale in and scale out. You will have to set up the security policies, do your monitoring, even management, log management, and all of that management functions have to be performed. And you would also want to do 
orchestration um, as in doing your auto scaling or you want to have uh, backups uh, set up that keep doing it or in terms of configuration management pushing um, applications into your uh, provision VMs or let's say uh, patching the latest version of uh, a certain application into your existing infrastructure. So that is a, a typical um, multi-cloud environment. Uh, let's take that as a use case. Um, so typically your horizon sits in any one of these, let's say this is one OpenStack setup and your, uh, the horizon UI by default lets you connect only to the infrastructure in that cloud. So how do you enable horizon to be able to manage all of these different infrastructure is what uh, I'm uh, going to talk about. A brief look at uh, different um, tools that are available in the market, let's say right scale, Dell Cloud Manager, Scalar, Scale Extreme, Service Mesh. Um, so I've also tried to give uh, uh, details about, let's say, what type of solutions they are. Are they uh, SaaS or a hosted solution, or they also provide uh, on-premise installation or open source? Um, the uh, importance of that is that, let's say if they are a SaaS solution, um, enterprises might um, might not be interested in uh, giving all their credentials to a, um, a SaaS provider where you'll have to give away all your credentials of your infrastructure, uh, which is the only way where you can manage those uh, clouds. And let's say they have a limited set of stack in terms of the private cloud platforms that they support, you'll not be able to, uh, let's say you have a different environment, a uh, private cloud platform, which is not supported by uh, that uh, tool, you'll not be able to extend that to it. And in terms of public clouds, again, the same limitation. If they don't provide access to something, you will not be able to manage that. Again, you'll have to go for a, uh, a separate UI that the uh, public cloud offers to manage your infrastructure. So why would you want to customize Horizon? Simplicity, um, because all your uh, DevOps, all of us are very used to Horizon uh, and its uh, simple uh, infrastructure. You will be able to, uh, if you are able to extend the same uh, UI and you are able to manage all your clouds, it's going to be of uh, great value. And in terms of consolidation, you don't have to um, have different uh, your uh, data and resources into different infrastructure that you want to uh, get into and uh, manage. You don't have to uh, do context switching where um, these, uh, the UI, the way they are built, uh, it is different in different uh, platforms. You'll have to um, get accustomed to it. You'll have to uh, perform one action there and then go to other uh, UI and perform the other action there. So you can avoid all of those and have a single pane of glass which is our uh, horizon to manage all of these uh, clouds. And you would also be able to uh, customize the UI to suit your enterprise needs. Uh, and uh, you would be able to have um, security at the granular level that you can set up and have all of your users uh, and roles managed. Um, and, and OpenStack, we know that uh, it is designed and built for extensibility and we would uh, very much want to use that and derive value out of it. A brief look at uh, what are the different uh, components. In terms of uh, UI components, you have dashboards, panel groups, panels, you have tabs, workflows, data tables, and actions that you can perform on them. And the software repository, uh, you have the Horizon base class, uh, which is inherited by the OpenStack dashboard, which is your uh, Horizon that you uh, see and uh, use. Uh, a brief uh, display of what are the different uh, components uh, in the UI. You have uh, dashboards at the uh, top level and you have panel groups, the different panels and uh, the other uh, data tables and uh, so on. Okay. Um, how does the Horizon request flow work? You will, uh, so this is your uh, Horizon dashboard. Uh, when the user logs in, the first thing it does is it uh, reach, uh, reaches out to uh, Keystone, gets the authentication done, the credentials are validated, and then the user gets a 
token and also a um, service catalog. The service catalog uh, lists the uh, different services that the user is authorized to, to use. So, the authentication and authorization is done by uh, identity which is a keystone and then once you have the token and the service catalog, now Horizon is able to reach out to any of these services let's such as uh, Nova or Glance or Swift to get your actions uh, performed. Now, um, before we get into uh, what was done, um, trying to list down what are the different uh, requirements that you would want to satisfy. You would want to be able to manage multiple OpenStack environments like we saw different uh, private clouds in the same enterprise and you would want to manage multiple clouds whether they are private or public even if they are from a different platform and support multiple tenants, be able to have granular level of security and you would want to do your own branding for your OpenStack setup. And I'll have a, a brief demo of um, the application that uh, we had built. Okay. okay, so let me start from the sign up. So this is the sign in page, which is again uh, customized because we wanted a feature for a sign up. Um, a tenant should be able to come in and sign up and um, uh, get a login. So the, the sign up uh, feature, which is not available by default, we had to include that and have our own uh, branding on that. So uh, if you use the sign up, you have the regular sign up process where you get an uh, email activation and then once you activate, you'll be able to log in. Uh, let me log into one of the accounts. Okay, so these are the four different uh, platforms that we um, started uh, s uh, supporting. Um, Amazon, um, CNEXT stands for Compute Next, which is a cloud brokerage platform that I talked about. And uh, HP Cloud, which is enabled from, uh, which is from the OpenStack platform anyway. And my OpenStack as a platform where you can support multiple OpenStack uh, platforms as well. So these are the platforms and I will be able to add multiple clouds here by clicking on any of these uh, platforms. Uh, for example, if I would like to add an OpenStack uh, platform to my Okay, let me Okay, I clicked on Add Cloud, and it has been added as another uh, cloud. So these are the different clouds that we are able to now manage from uh, Resort Now. And you can see that you have all of those available as um, dashboards. For example, each of these uh, clouds here will have a separate uh, dashboard here. Let me give it a minute here. Okay, so you, you can see that this is the regular uh, UI where you are able to have the, uh, in terms of OpenStack, you can manage all your uh, regular panels, including the instances, volumes, images, security, network, and all of that. And very similar to that, you also have AWS listed as one of the dashboards where you are able to uh, manage the AWS instances and resources as well. And this is the dashboard for uh, Compute Next and uh, HP Cloud. So you are able to get all of these as individual dash dashboards into the same horizon where you can start uh, managing it. And the other uh, features is uh, once you are a, the first person who signs up is the tenant admin by default, and uh, he would be able to add new users and assign roles to them. 
and in the roles, we are able to create roles and also uh, edit the policies for the uh, roles. For example, these are the different uh, policies that you can give and you can also specify different um, access uh, policies for different clouds as well. For example, in HP, the user can per perform only certain actions. In a different uh, cloud, let us say the OpenStack, uh, you user can perform a set of actions. So, you will be able to set access at the uh, granular level. And say you want to launch an instance in your AWS account, you can do it right from here. And uh, let me also quickly show you another. Um, this is my uh, HP Cloud account, where I am showing the, um, there is one volume. Uh, I can quickly uh, create a volume snapshot uh, just as an use case. And so this is your um, AWS, where you can launch an instance right from here, select an availability zone in AMI and select one of your images and just launch an instance. Uh, likewise, switching on to HP, I want to create a did a snapshot switching here we did okay so we can see that in the hp cloud dashboard we are able to see the uh, snapshot uh, created and same thing you see it here as well okay i'll switch back to the presentation So what we did, um, we made changes to the branding uh, that uh, I, I believe everyone knows that you can go to the um, static files and uh, change your uh, logos and styles. And once you have your uh, branding done, then we created a custom login page uh, with a sign up feature. And we changed that as the default uh, login page, which the user will uh, hit. I will show you a, a brief uh, code snippet of uh, how it was done and uh, like I said, uh, I am also open to share the code uh, if you are interested. And we built a custom layer that will perform the authorization, authentication and authorization. So this cus uh, custom layer, um, it was uh, built as a, um, a dashboard and so that layer will talk to uh, our own uh, MongoDB database which will take care of the authentication and the authorization. So all these uh, roles and users that I showed get stored in a MongoDB database, uh, which is uh, performing this auth and auth. And so now that we have our own custom layer, uh, we should bypass the identity uh, service from doing the authentication and authorization. So that is what uh, we did. So for the admin users, uh, we removed the access to the admin dashboard. So and then for the regular users, we went into the project uh, dashboard and then removed uh, authorization for all the different actions. And we added our own custom authorizations for each of those actions. So this has to be done for uh, each platform. Uh, again, we uh, inherited the OpenStack dashboard, made our own uh, changes in these uh, each of the um, panels and the, uh, the table, uh, table files where we went in and changed the authorization, added a step to go into our own authorization before uh, it reaches out to the uh, services. So for, let's say for AWS or CNEX for HP, we created uh, a new uh, dashboard and we also did an integration with the platform APIs. So for AWS, you can do it with the Boto APIs and for um, Compute Next, they have their own APIs that they expose. 
and we integrated with those platform APIs and we registered those dashboards mm -hmm. into the uh, installed apps which enabled us to do that. And we uh, created that uh, manage dashboard which I just showed you which will manage the user's roles which will talk to our MongoDB uh, database in the background. And we created a, a page which will uh, help in switching between accounts which are from the same platform. For example, um, in this case, in OpenStack, I have uh, two accounts. And if the user would like to uh, switch between those two accounts, uh, he'll be able to go for uh, changing this account and manage that specific account so that you don't have so for for a given platform you would only have one dashboard but if you go there you will be able to switch the account and manage the different um, account from there and few uh, code snippets which uh, show that in the url spy we added this um, uh, the page for the sign up and you can see that the authentication, which directly goes to the OpenStack auth, we bypassed it to our own um, uh, URL. And we also added one for the uh, sign up. And th this is where the, the default home page, which goes to the Horizon uh, dashboard, the default home page, we bypassed it and created our own. Uh, the where you see all the clouds listed, we uh, changed it there. And these are the different dashboards that we created, one for Amazon, one for HP Cloud, uh, one for Compute Next, and so on. Okay. So the related features in OpenStack that uh, enable a similar kind of a use case of identity federation, there has been a lot of discussions around it. Uh, we even had a discussion around it in the uh, keynotes. Um, so which enables uh, federation uh, in and federation out uh, from uh, keystones. So basically, uh, different uh, the keystones from different OpenStack setups can talk to each other. So you don't have to necessarily have uh, to uh, authenticate yourself into each keystone individually. So uh, Keystone can um, be an identity provider and also a service provider. So if you uh, log into one of these OpenStack setup, you are automatically able to um, get your actions done in the other OpenStack uh, setup as well. And the authorization is uh, controlled by the respective uh, domains, but you will still be able to authenticate yourself uh, with the identity federation. So this is available. Um, so the federation, a federated in was available right from also ice house and from kilo you are also able to uh, federate out which is keystone acts as the identity provider as well and the cascading open stack uh, is still in the uh, blueprint stage uh, where you have a parent child relationship uh, where you have uh, the parent open stack once you authenticate you are able to uh, manage multiple uh, open stack setups which act as uh, children. So, and within that, they also have this concept of, or the plan to do it is to uh, replicate the images and also uh, be able to uh, collect the uh, usages from the different individual kilometers and uh, aggregate that up to the parent uh, OpenStack. So, that is in the, so some references there. Um, so, that's all I had. Um, any questions? Right. Uh, we'll have to do an uh, upgrade. Um, so initially, when we did it, we uh, did it with uh, Ice House. Uh, so we'll have to upgrade it to Juno. It might require a day's effort or so, just to ensure uh, it works with the new version as well. Yes. Um, we did, but we have not done that uh, yet. Um, with the identity federation, it, it, it kind of looks um, like as if we are, uh, the problem is solved partially. Uh, but yes, we are open to uh, open source it and upstream it, yes. Yes. Uh, 
how do you get the keystone? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, no, we don't because uh, the authentication page itself has been changed. So it's our own custom page, and that sends the authentication to our layer. So it does not go to Keystone at all. Uh, right. So we kind of mimic that. So the um, uh, the authorization again is handled by the roles and the policies that we set. So once we do that, our layer gives you the service catalog, which is again used for. So we kind of commented out everything that is going to Keystone and added a line or a layer that goes to our layer. So basically, Keystone is bypassed. Um, that we again, uh, it has to go through, uh, let's say, uh, AWS or Compute Next. So that we'll have to get a token and uh, start doing it. So that is the API integration that we have done. It is like building a connector to that platform, and then we start uh, doing the interaction. Uh, yes, so it's it's done once, and then yes, uh, correct, correct, yes. So for all the admin related stuff, it only goes to your correct uh, layer. Yeah. You go and for a token correct, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Correct. I, I'll have to create a new dashboard, uh, implement integration with uh, that platform's APIs, and then uh, add it to the uh, applications that we support. Yeah. Any challenges facing the current <coughs> uh, Horizon dashboard in terms of scalability, especially with the data table? Um, because now no. you're managing multiple clouds. Yes. Several instances. Correct. Recollect any specific challenge, uh, though. But um, these platforms that we enabled, uh, we are able to manage it without uh, issues. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. Uh, like I said, I'm open to share the source code, so uh, we can. Uh, I'll uh, get your uh, email ID. Reach out to me, and yes. Uh, right now, it is not. Um, yes, but like I said, I am open to sharing it. Yes. 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 We store that in the MongoDB that we created, yes. 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 Uh, so the question is about a Keystone Federation alone, or uh, in terms of integrate. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. 
Correct. Okay. So, with this tool, the requirement for the federation is not there because we are going to manage uh, that authentication or authorization. Uh, but in terms of uh, having a federation underlying uh, this uh, layer, um, we are uh, exploring that because um, Kilo, we have installed that in our uh, OpenStack, uh, in our lab, and we are exploring that as of now. We haven't done that yet. Mm -hmm. The <coughs> Correct. We have not explored that yet. Any further questions? Yeah. Uh, the native APIs, yes, they have. Um, so, the clouds that we add, because the user provides us the uh, endpoint and the access details. So, the same thing, they can use it to directly access those clouds. Uh, it is only the UI that we are uh, providing. They would, they would authenticate against Keystone. If they are going through the APIs, they would be directly authenticating with the Keystones. Yes. Okay. Um, a related uh, topic where, um, where we are now decoupling heat um, and we are able to orchestrate across multiple platforms. That is another uh, product uh, that our team has uh, built, and we have a related talk about it uh, tomorrow. So if you are interested, you can attend that. And for any further questions, I'll get back to you. So th these are my contact details. And um, you can also reach out to me if you need the presentation or the code. Yes, sir. This orchestration yeah. product? Correct. Okay. Okay. I have not explored it. Sure, we'll do that. Okay. There are no further questions. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Thanks.